Tracing walls on a reference drawing is definitely much easier than drawing them from scratch. So we'll start with that. Uh, first thing we're going to do is just double check our 3D height. So I'll right click, go to edit 3D levels. Make sure our first floor is the wall height that we want. So I have a nine foot, one and an eighth. Uh, the slab underneath, I'm going to change that so that we have a framed floor underneath. So I'll select my first floor floor system, right click, go to select floor or ceiling, and I'll pick a 2 by 12 floor system. Click OK. And now I also want to make sure that I'm going to pick the right wall type. So I'll use our verified dimension tool or verified distance. Click two points. And we'll see we have a five and a half inch framing. So I'll pick a two by six wall. The same process works if you're doing uh, steel framing or wood framing, uh, working in imperial units or metric units. The selections will be different but the process is the same. So I will pick a two by six exterior bearing wall. Click OK. And watching the prompts in the bottom left, it says insert wall, that's the function we're in, and select point. So it's waiting for us to select a point. I'm gonna zoom in using my mouse wheel, get close to our exterior corner there you see I get the yellow dot that's my automatic snap point so I can left click there and it automatically starts the wall I have an arrow on the exterior side of the wall so I know which way the siding is facing I can also choose what line my cursor is attached to right now it is on the exterior framing line and if you right click you get a bunch of other auxiliary functions available here. Uh, these three buttons with the black dots will, are automatic selections for uh, exterior framing line, the center line, or the interior framing line. We also have a button here where you can choose a different line and that opens up a preview picture. So you can select a line either from the cross section or the plan view. And if I snap to, let's say, the exterior siding line, you'll notice down in the bottom center, it's showing wall equals, and that's the name of the wall that I currently have selected. And then line equals is showing the line that I currently am using uh, as the reference line. But I want to change that back to my exterior framing. So I'm going to select uh, placement wall outside and then down in the bottom center it now switches back to line equals exterior. If you wanted to flip the exterior side of the wall around you can right click and select mirror. So for example if I wanted to start drawing in this direction and now I can snap to the other end of the wall so I'll hold my cursor close to that point and left click and then continue around the perimeter of my layout. And if you just want to be sure that you are um, locking the wall perfectly horizontal or vertical, you can use, uh, we have a tool here where we can automatically alternate between horizontal and vertical. So since my next wall is going to be horizontal, I'm going to select this wall uh, lock cursor horizontally. So now I'm, I'm locked horizontal. I'll select my next point, and now I'm automatically switched to vertical. So it's a neat tool that, allow, that quickly allows me to constrain the direction. And then when I select this last point, it's going to recognize that I'm closing the perimeter, and it will complete the wall. So it drew the wall, and now it's waiting for me to start another wall. And I want to pick a different wall, so I'm going to right-click and select this little index card. Select another wall, and that takes me back to the wall dialog. 
and I can choose a different wall. So I'm going to go to my interior wall library, framed walls, and I'll pick a 2x4 interior bearing. Click OK. Select a start point. So now this time I want to mirror that wall around. So I'm going to right click and actually I'm turning off the mirror wall selection. And this time I'm going to constrain myself in the horizontal direction using the uh, the keyboard shortcut U. Another way you could do that is if you right click we have constraint in the X direction and that also tells you those keyboard shortcuts right there U, I, E for parallel and T for perpendicular. And those are actually toggles so since I selected it it turned it off so I'm going to turn it back on again and select the other end and then it's waiting for me to select another point but I'm done so I'm going to hit confirm so that is pressing down on the mouse wheel or a V on the keyboard or I can right click and select OK which it shows you right there the keyboard shortcut is V and now I can continue and select additional walls here I'm going to go to interior non-bearing walls so I'm going to right click again go to the index card pick 2x4 interior non-bearing and continue to trace around my layout so again I get a mirror I'll lock in horizontal snap lock in vertical and confirm and I do want to keep an eye on the exterior side of the wall even though I'm working in interior walls um, technically they're both the same I just have drywall on both sides but when I start to generate wall panels, the wall panel label will be placed on the exterior side of the wall. So when I have little areas like this, like a closet, if I keep the exterior sides of the wall on the outside, then I won't end up with all those little panel labels stacked on top of each other on the inside of that closet. but you can move them around later anyways and then I have two more walls here for the stairwell escape to get out of the insert wall function and then I can hit F2 or I can click on this middle button to switch between 2D and 3D windows and see what it looks like in the 3D model. So I'm just pressing down on my mouse wheel while I move my mouse around a little bit to rotate and I can zoom in and out by rolling the mouse wheel.